Hi, welcome to my next video. This time I wanted to show you a small update on the Super Note note-taking device, the e-ink note-taking device that I already showed you in a previous video. Uh, the maker of this device, Rata, gave me the Super Note A5X because they wanted me to test their future updates, the features that they wanted to uh, include in the future. So we actually got really interesting features for the original notes app so like the original app that is for writing and for note taking for example this mode that i showed here so the mode that allows for uh, landscape drawing so i can turn the screen 90 degrees and we also got a streaming mode so i can stream what i'm doing on my uh, super note device to my computer's browser or to someone else's browser to show them what I'm doing and make a slideshow maybe or just do something uh, live also. So these features and a lot of other smaller ones were included in the original notes app which made this device a very 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 nice um, solution for distraction free handwriting and hand drawing uh, memos and like quick sketches like this. We have like four five layers that you can use uh, three basic types of pens, a regular pen, the one that responds to pressure and like a highlighter, few shades of gray that we can use, which is more than enough to just do drawings like this and memos and, and graphs and, and all kinds of uh, sketching. Uh, I actually like how this app works, how uh, not laggy, very responsive the pen and the lines are. Uh, I like how the pen feels on the screen. I think this is the best uh, digital writing device that I tested so far. I haven't tested the Remarkable because I don't have it, but um, I write on the Super Note a lot better than on my iPad. And I actually prefer to like doodle on it uh, from my iPad too. And now uh, the biggest update that I was waiting for is the new Atelier app, which is there in the menu. They added a new app that is well meant for drawing and sketching precisely so it's not a note taking thing so you have one file that is like one page and uh, a lot of new brushes that uh, they added you have 16 shades of gray now to use and from what i can see this app is based on bitmaps uh, as the previous uh, memos app was based on vectors so there we had lines that were kind of chunky and pixely here we have lines and tools that are by default these nice textured representations of pencils and pens and markers and so on. So we have few kinds of pencils starting from 4H to 8B. We have some uh, inking pens that are just nice black pens that also respond to pen pressure and the velocity of the lines. We have few markers and we have some special tools like um, these airbrushes. So all these tools are kind of basic, there is just few of them. We cannot modify these presets from uh, what I can see right now. And by, by that I mean that we cannot even uh, modify the size of the brush. And adding to that there are just a few basic features like a select feature so we can select things, move them around, rotate them, make them bigger and so on. Uh, we can erase, there's an eraser, there's an eraser that er erases the whole layer uh, and uh, there is zoom so we can actually zoom a bit. Uh, this is also different to the memo app that does, doesn't have zoom. So here we can zoom a bit and we have few layers that we can use. There are five layers and they don't have any modes or transparency or anything fancy like that. Just five layers that you can Kind of move around and, and uh, just split your drawing into these five layers. For all our drawing adventures we can use 16 shades of grey and that's basically it. So yeah there's not much going on here. Um, there are some features that are not here yet I guess because on the website when I uh, saw what they were writing about this app they said that there will be export to PSD with all the five layers that uh, we can use here in this app, which is not here yet. We can only export to PNG and that uh, there will be a bucket tool kind of field tool thing, uh, which is also not here yet from what I can see. 
But with this simplicity comes the advantage of, of course, being able to do this on a device like this. So e-ink, low power device, it's not an iPad Pro. So we want to keep things simple here so it's nice and snappy and it works as well as the previous, the memo app. As laggy the interface is, as it has to be because of the e-ink, the drawing experience is good. Okay, let's actually try to draw something. I had this photo of a shrine that I took already a few years back while we were still living near Enoshima. And I wanted to try to sketch it for some time now. And it was a perfect kind of photo for this test because it's kind of shadow and light, black and white oriented. I thought that I could uh, have fun and just try to draw it in pure black and white on this device and try to do some layers so maybe a sketch layer and a line work layer and a shading layer or two and let's see how all the brushes and all the functionality kind of fares here so let's enjoy me drawing and i'll talk about my experience in using this application but just pre please keep in mind that this is still version like 1.0 so it's like we are using photoshop from windows 95 or the first version of procreate so, okay, let's be a bit lenient with this app and we can maybe forgive it some minuses for now, but um, let's see what we have here actually. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is an e-ink display device, which means that the display is actually made in a way that um, prefers refreshing the whole screen at once. So if you have your e-reader, if you have your Kindle and you flip a page and you flip a page and you flip a page and then on the next flip, it will refresh the whole screen to make it nice and crisp. So it gets rid of all the after images from uh, the previous refreshes and make the font nice and black and dark and the contrast better. And um, this type of screens don't fare very good on devices that are trying to refresh just a part of the screen at once. And this is what we are trying to do here. So we are trying to make some lines and stuff only on the part of the e -ink screen re with, without refreshing the whole screen at once. And I have to say that uh, compared to some other devices that I tested recently, the Super Node, both the memo app that was previously available and the new drawing app first really nice here it doesn't have any flicker it doesn't have any um weird like after images or ghosting or weird cursors or whatever there is of course the ghosting and after images that come inherit from the e-ink display the technology itself but this is very well executed as well as it can be probably and very stable. I was afraid that because they were trying to do something new here and more difficult with textured brushes and stuff that there will be some flicker or something. But no, this is as stable as a Kindle, for example. So very, very usable and very good for eye strain. All the brushes are very quick and responsive and feel not laggy at all. I very, very like how the pencil presets and the inking presets work and feel. I would like to have some ability adjust, to adjust them, even the size, just. Uh, but it's not here. I, I'm guessing that it will be there in the future, but for now you can only like choose a preset and a color and there you go. Uh, so that's a minus right now but I very, very like how uh, these two categories of brushes feel. I, to be honest, hate how the um, marker brushes and the airbrush brushes feel because I really couldn't get them to work as I wanted. I couldn't get flat shading with them and I also couldn't make them look nice as like the airbrush type brushes. So these are weirdly in between and hard to use a bit retro digitally paint microsoft paint like feel to them and i really dislike how these presets look and work and we cannot change any properties of these presets so i really hope that rata uh, will make these better for me seriously this is the biggest minus of this app for now uh, as much as I really liked how, uh, to use the pencil and the inking brushes, uh, the markers and the air brushes are awful. Rata, if you're listening, just get my Procreate set and copy it. 
uh, you'll be okay. Uh, layers are okay, we have five of them. They work fine for managing our drawing so we can make like a sketch on separate layer and shading on separate layer and lines on separate layer and so on. There is no opacity sadly, uh, but we can um, merge layers if we run out of layers, which is really good. I would add the opacity and the ability to lock the alpha here if I could. Okay, so we have also selection tool and um, the move kind of transform tool that comes with it, which works okay. I had few problems with um, clicking somewhere like weird outside of the selection and just the selection disappearing. So I think that's a bug. Uh, that I hope that will be uh, addressed. But a part of that, my problem is that there's no free transform. So we can make stuff bigger and smaller and like wider and so on and skew it and rotate it, but we have no free transform, which is a bit of a bummer for like brainstorming and sketching for me. What I would like to do is to long press one of the corners, for example, and drag it so I can make a uh, free transform like in Photoshop so I can modify a sketch or something that I drew but it's not just perfect I want to make it just perfect just making perspective or whatever that would be a great feature for brainstorming on a device like this okay so the picture is nearly done I had fun doing this even though there were some glitches with palm rejection and um, accidentally zooming a bit or moving the picture around but apart from that, um, I had a great experience of drawing on an e-ink tablet. There's always have to be this e-ink asterisk because there are limitations to these devices. So the next step was to take a screenshot. So this is a screenshot of the actual picture as it looks on the device. And I also exported it to PNG, which spew out uh, a 1400 pixel PNG file without background. And here is how this file looks after I put white background underneath the contents. So this is without any filters or addition in Photoshop or anything. Personally, I really like the look of the pixelated file that came out of the uh, Super Note straight, so the screenshot. One thing that I would like to add here is that apparently the new Atelier app works in only two bits, so black and white pixels only but the device itself is capable of displaying grays and in the memos app i'm able to use grays just gray i don't know why it is but maybe just it's an efficiency thing just when we export the content to png we can see the actual picture we were painting and i really don't like how the png looks like and this is how the brushes are rendered uh, like smoothed and so on I would prefer a more flat but sharp and textured look so that would be similar actually to what I saw on the screen of the Super Note in a way, so more sharper and more grittier. Right now the PNG is mushy and low quality. Okay, so what do I think about this app? It's a very good 1.0 version effort. If they fix the brushes that are in these two problematic categories and if they add the PSD export and make it less mushy and small, then uh, this will be a very viable option for drawing and sketching on e-ink screen. Yes, there were some smaller bugs and glitches on the way, like moving accidentally the picture and with my hand and so on, but I hope that these will also be smoothed out in the future releases. Personally, I still prefer how my sketches end up looking when I'm doing them in the memos app, so in the original app, but I can see the potential here for a true uh, like sketching and drawing app uh, on an e-ink screen. Okay, that's it for me for this video. I hope you liked it. As always, feel free to comment, share and subscribe and you can also support me on Patreon. The device that I was reviewing here was given to me by uh, Rata, but they didn't have any influence over this video. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye.